Well, uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining this session. So before going or before starting the, pre the presentation, I would like to uh, give a brief idea about what exactly the matrix of thousands of data streams mean. So we have attended today uh, and yesterday a lot of sessions on IoT and ML and a lot of things where we have seen that uh, a burst of devices and the data they are, that, that they are generating is, uh, is, is like a boom. Uh, now, from, from business perspective, uh, it's, it's good because we can drive a lot of business value out of it, but how we can, uh, but from, from an engineer's or a developer's perspective, how we can achieve or handle these many, this much data and devices with, uh, with very less resources, right? Because the resources are limited, but the data is unlimited. So this session, in this session, we'll see how we can tackle or how we tackle this issue at uh, Nordis. Now, uh, before we begin, so let me tell you a little something about me. Uh, my name is Himanshu, and I work as a lead consultant at Nordis Inc. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. If you want to tweet something about this session, you can definitely do that. And uh, this one is my LinkedIn uh, profile link. So if you want to just connect it over LinkedIn, you are very much welcome. Now let's move on towards to today's agenda. So first we'll see what exactly is the need for, the, for handling a data stream of thousands of matrices, oh, sorry, a matrix of thousands of data streams. Next, the challenges that we faced uh, while handling so much, uh, so many streams, and our solution for that one, and of course, uh, our future work that we are planning to add to it. Now let's go through the first use case. So the first thing is the need, make better use of the real-time data. The real-time data that we are getting today is, uh, is enormous, right? And it's not just related to one domain, it's actually being generated in all the fields. So for example, in healthcare, uh, today people are wearing devices like uh, Fitbit watches and smart watches, and in fact, these pacemakers and the devices are getting smarter. They're sending out real-time data uh, to, the, to the servers, right? Now how we can use that? Now it can be used to identify areas of improvement, monitor patients' health, right? Not just during uh, when they are admitted to the hospitals, but also when they are uh, when they're out, because they definitely need care once they go out of the hospital. Next domain is, of course, finance, right? Uh, for example, in stock trading, the uh, prices of stocks changes every second, right? Now that data is getting generated at a very uh, fast pace. Now with this data, or utilizing this data can make someone rich or someone like poor, because the, pri the prices of the stocks goes up or down very, uh, very quickly, right? So how we can use that data and uh, use, make, or make efficient use of it. So let's see uh, like a few benefits. So in 2014, uh, using the real-time data analytics, the mortality rate was reduced from 7.75% to 6.42% in Queen Alexandra Hospital in Portsmouth and University Hospital Coventry. Uh, so they used the real-time data that they were receiving from their devices or equipments to handle, uh, to reduce the mortality rate. Now, which is, th now this rate is not much, but, we, but, if we but if we count them in terms of the life that they saved, that's like a lot. Next, uh, the world's largest hedge fund called Bridgewater uses the Twitter for real-time uh, economic modeling. Now, the hedge fund uses the uh, tweets that they are, that are being done to analyze the trends that are going to get there in the uh, economic world or the financial world so that they can make the right decisions to make the investments in the right areas and domains. Now, first, uh, let's see. What can be a solution? Now, this is just a probable solution that we came up with. What, uh, the solution was an end-to-end -end real time data platform which can analyze and prepare data in a single platform as a service or, be, or basically a pass. Now, what this platform does, 
and what challenges it actually resolves. <coughs> let's uh, let's um, take a look at that. Now first, let's take a look at the challenges. Now collecting data from thousands or maybe tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of data streams is actually difficult. Now why it's difficult? Because uh, streams as compared to batch are more uh, resource intensive because they keep, uh, they keep like the systems busy around the clock, right? We cannot just stop them in between uh, like a batch because with a batch, it just erupts once or gets, uh, get, like we get a batch data once, we process them and we're done. But in case of streams, those are resource intensive and uh, we, if they have to be run like 24 by seven. Next thing is using each stream for different purpose makes processing even harder. Now how we can uh, use each and every different stream to uh, make, a, make like a separate meaning out of it. So for example, uh, as we saw that for the healthcare, it's the patient's data which is much more important, right? Now the processing of the healthcare data is totally different from what we process, the, the way we find and the way we process the financial data, right? Because it has different parameters, there are different use cases and those things. Now how we can handle the processing? And the last challenge is managing data of mission critical value is a challenge. Of course, the stream data is being used for what? It is being used to deliver the value out of the data in real time, right? It means in split of in split seconds. Now, uh, managing the uh, managing like managing data, which is mission critical, for example, like patient's health and stock market, it's quite uh, quite important. Now, how to overcome that challenge? Now all these challenges were came over by the platform that was built. And these are the three core components of the, of the, of the platform that we have built. Uh, one is Kafka. And uh, so Kafka is a very popular, uh, popular streaming uh, framework, right? Uh, it's used a lot for uh, keeping the queue, for like uh, sending messages or using the PubSub model, right? The next thing is, of course, Apache Spark, which we actually use for analyzing the data. And of course, uh, and uh, it, it helps us in processing a lot of, uh, provides a lot of features. And the last one is, uh, for storage, we use Amazon S3. So these three things are the core components of our platform. Of course, there are other, uh, other components as well, but these are the core components that we are using right now. Now the first uh, challenge or the first part is to stream data. Now streaming data into thousands of uh, streams is a resource intensive process. Uh, as I said that in, a, in case of a stream, we cannot just switch them off. We have to keep them on, right? And uh, doing that is a very, very uh, resource intensive process. Since uh, streaming requires dedicated resources, the number of streams supported by our system gets limited by the resources available. So suppose that we have to support about like, a, uh, about like 100 devices, right, which are emitting data at a very fast pace. And then how to handle all those streams at once, right? However, if combined, streams can be managed much more efficiently. Now, what combination means, we'll see uh, in the further slides. But by combination, we mean that is, if there is some way of grouping them together, and finding a logical group out of those streams, then it would make much more sense to us and it will be a very much helpful for the developers to handle them, right? How? Uh, we'll see later on. And also starting or stopping a stream becomes easy since data is managed by a group, right? Now, what if one of the devices start, um, start uh, like stop emitting data or goes uh, like a failure there, right? Or if we have, or there is some maintenance going on for those devices, how we'll handle those start stop failures, right? So let's take an example of a powerhouse which has like hundreds of devices which are emitting uh, data uh, in real time. And the data can be anything. It can be regarding the temperature or, or the speed in case of motors, it can be their RPMs and other things, right? So since the data is coming from one source that is like a power plant or maybe some, uh, maybe some uh, building, then we can group that, all those devices, all those streams into single 
uh, pipeline. And like we can just combine all those data and the streams into a single pipeline and put that into one queue, right? Now this, um, this helps the management of the streams uh, before even we have started analyzing it, right? So we have created a group of all those streams on the basis of their location. Now this uh, particular, now we can uh, group them on the basis of their type as well, right? Or on the basis of their location or on the basis of their, basis of their use case. So it can be any logical grouping that we can use here. Now, how the data looks like, so this part is a little bit technical, but uh, let me try to explain it a mit little bit uh, easier. So in case of Kafka, we have a very important, we, we, have, a, we have a feature where we can um, like provide a key to each and every data element that we produce. So for example, here a key identifies the device ID, that is the device from which that, that data is generated, and the value is actually the data that key is actually, uh, that device is actually generating, right? Now this value can be anything, right? So we, uh, so the platform is totally agnostic of what the data is getting generated. That's like not, not uh, considered as, a, as an issue with the platform because it's totally dependent on the use case that we are trying to solve here, right? So af as Caspa is being used, the result of combining the data from different streams into one looks like above, where key represents one device, of the power plant for the previous example, and the value, of course, is the data that they are actually uh, emitting. Now, we have solved the first issue of our, uh, of our platform, which was uh, like handling these many streams, right, by grouping them into one. Now, the next challenge that we face here is anal analyzing the data. Now, analyzing or com analyzing the combined or group data have many challenges. Of course, when we have all the streams uh, in all the devices separate, we can analyze them separately, right? And their management, state management, and other things would be very, very easy, right? But what if, but since we have combined them, now how would we be able to handle them as, as a group, right? I cannot handle device one uh, and device two separately because they are now grouped up. So that is the first challenge in the analysis. For example, like applying different analytics on different device, different data source. So a device one can have a different use case, device two can be used for different use case, or maybe a different, different type in its own. For example, like device one is just a motor, and device two is actually a boiler, right? So they must be emitting different kinds of data, right? Now, how would I apply different kinds of processing on each and every one of them? Uh, because we have combined them now. Or managing the state of each data source. Now, by state here, we mean that what, uh, <clears throat> in case our application or our platform is under maintenance or has gone down, right, we need to begin from where we left. So managing the state there is very important because we cannot just let those devices be, device data be left uh, without any, uh, without any uh, care once the platform is down for some maintenance or there is some failure with the devices. So how we overcame these things was using Spark, right? Particularly using the Spark structure streaming. So the first reason of selecting the Spark structure streaming was that the structure streaming actually supports both. That is, a batch, that is a batch data and the streaming data, right? So that was the first reason of selecting it. Since uh, the data, the, since the data that we were getting from our clients so on, on our platform was, uh, was like, can be batch and what can be as a streaming as well. Since the introduction of the structured streaming in Apache Spark 2.0, the way processing streams has changed a lot, as it has brought a lot of new features which were earlier unheard of, right? Uh, what those features were, how we use them, of course, I'll tell you in a small demo where, we, where we'll also show the code, uh, a small snippet from our platform that we are actually using right now. <clears throat> Sorry. Of course, the first reason of using Spark was that it provides support for ad hoc queries, right? That is, helps in applying different analytics on different data sources. Second one is it manages state of each data source by arbitrary stateful operations. Now, the arbitrary stateful operations is one of the features of structured streaming in Spark, which actually helps a lot in terms of managing the state. 
when we have data which is actually of different uh, kind, but coming from it, but coming from a single source. For us, the source was Kafka, right? Since we have already combined all our devices' data into a single queue, to separate them out and to manage them separately, we actually used this feature and it came very handy for us. Now the next challenge was to actually store the data. Now, storing data might seem very easy to us, but it was again a challenge for us. Because since we have combined the data into a single queue, I don't know which, uh, where the data, where, whether the device one data is getting streamed or not, because it's in a group now, right? Or whether it is actually not even emitting any data, right? So how would I know? The only way to, uh, and, and then even if I, then, and if I don't know whether the data is coming from there or not, or whether it is in sync with other devices or not, how would I know when to save, save its data and when to not? So that, that is the first challenge here. Because an after analysis of multiple data sources is done, it is difficult to materialize it and save it in different locations. So let's take an example that there are like hundreds of devices which are emitting data. They are going to be out of sync. They are not going to be in sync. So how would I decide when to save data for which device, right? And when they are ready actually to save the data. So in that case, uh, how would I, how would I uh, make, a, make, make a decision that when to save data for the, that particular device and where to save it, right? And also saving in such a way that retrieving, uh, retrieving the data becomes easy. By retrieving, I mean that in future, if I want to run some kind of uh, like uh, analytics over the stored data that we have from the device from the powerhouse, like for example, how much uh, energy the powerhouse has generated in the last one year, right, or in the last one month, if we want to run some kind of analytics over our, that already saved data, then how we can do that in, in, a, in a very efficient manner. So these are the challenges in storing the data that we actually faced. Now, uh, in this thing, we again used Spark, which helped, uh, which helped us in not only managing the data storage issue, but also managing their, their, their storage pattern that we applied that is like saving the data which in which in the form in which we actually it should be. So if I, if I uh, rephrase it correctly, then uh, it's exactly the same way that the device, so for example, like device one data is kept separately, uh, is kept separate from the device two data, right? And actually Spark helped us in this case, like separating out the data from the, uh, from the whole queue. Now how the output looked like was something like a file structure that we are very familiar with in a hierarchy. Uh, so the parent here actually represents a power plant or the source from where the data is coming. And each and every subfolder actually represents the uh, device containing the data uh, from which it was actually emitted. And we can even further divide this data into sub folders on the basis of like timestamps, for example, like on, the, on the basis of days, on the basis of months, or even basis of uh, uh, years, right? So this is how uh, Spark helped us in building a very efficient platform for handling so many kinds of, uh, kinds of data streams. Now, uh, let me showcase a small demo, right? So in this demo, what I'm going to do is like uh, in, with, with the help of a simulator, we'll try to simulate 100 devices which are emitting data uh, in terms of their power consumption, right? And on the basis of the power consumption of, that, of those devices, uh, we'll try to uh, analyze whether that device is on or off, right? Uh, why, why are we trying to just check whether they're on or off? Because we want to generate an alert in case any, kind, any device goes down, right? Uh, because we cannot keep on manually monitoring each and every uh, device in a, in a power plant. It has to be monitored through, through some automation. So let me just uh, first pull up the code. Right. So uh, before I begin with, the, uh, begin with the actual code that we have, uh, um, it's not showing it up. Uh, 
snow. I hope it's visible now, right? So in this uh, particular code, what we uh, what we are doing here is uh, actually yep, no, got it. So uh, in this code, what we are actually trying to do is we are just trying to generate some data, right, and send send into Kafka, right, on a very very random uh, basis here. So that is what we are trying to do here. Now the number of devices that we have selected here is like about 100, and they'll be generating data on a very random uh, basis, so there is no, no logic behind it. So this particular code will help me to generate or simulate that kind of a data, right? Now, how we are going to handle that? So before uh, we even uh, start the demo for this thing, uh, I'll try to uh, like uh, sorry so I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit about the code here so what we are doing here so first uh, as we all know that we are creating a stream right out of the out of the spark that we have right so we are we, uh, we are using here the spark session right so we are reading a stream which has a format of Kafka, right? And from there, uh, we have defined the, of course, my server location and the topic from where I want to read the data, right? And uh, along with that, some, of, some more parameters are there. So once that is done, I need to use the arbitrary stateful operations feature that we have uh, available in Spark Structure Streaming. Now let me showcase that a little bit. So what we have done here is, uh, it's a simple SQL query, which we are familiar with. We have selected the data that we need. Uh, we have just mapped it into uh, the form we need, right? That is like the device, and along with it's just Spark consumption value, right? And after that, we have actually grouped all the data that we get in one micro batch on the basis of the device ID, right? Once we get a group, it it allows us to apply some of the analytics that we want to apply on that in that particular micro batch, right? Now, the analytics that we are trying to apply here is to understand whether the device is on or whether it is it has gone off, right? On the basis of the power con power it is being actually consuming, or it has it it has not like not emitted any data for some time, right? Now that is being handled. Uh, with one of the functions called map uh, groups with state. Now mapping those groups along with the state helps us to keep the state of that particular device in which it was before it actually started, uh, b before we actually started like processing the data, right? Uh, so what exactly the processing actually is doing here, let me um, showcase the function. I hope I hope it's uh, it's visible. So this particular lambda function that we have that we have here is actually computing the device data, right, on the basis of the ID, right, that it has. Now along with so so along with the device ID, we also get a group which contains actually the all the data that particular device has in that particular micro batch, uh, which is being. Uh, signified by this second uh, parameter. And the last parameter actually uh, tells us about the state of, uh, of the, uh, the, the whole state for that particular uh, queue that we have. By queue, I mean that particular Kafka topic in which actually it was, right? Now, after that, we just uh, apply some kind of a function over there, right? And uh, try to compute the data. And the computation is quite simple. Uh, so for computation, we are actually using nothing, uh, just applying some analytics and some apply, like applying the uh, aggregation. One thing to note here is that like the aggregation being applied here is not on the whole data that we have for in this particular topic. It's regarding only one ID or particular key that we have here. Now, since we have our device ID as the key, so we can apply the arbitrary functions on the basis of that particular group. 
So this one, so this particular uh, like computation is quite uh, uniform, uh, like same for all the devices because it just, I mean, we are just taking for the power consumption here. But in case uh, we, if, if the key was the type of data, or sorry, the type of device, for example, like it would have been a boiler, it could have been in any kind of other thing, right? So in that case, we could have applied some intelligence in this particular function, right? And said that, okay, if it's a boiler, then do these, this kind of analytics. If it's, a, if it's a motor, then do these kind of analytics, right, for me. Now, in this way, we can handle uh, the processing of each and every device separately, even though we have not, we have not like, uh, like used many resources here. It's just a single stream that we have started and we are able to apply whatever kind of data we want to, or sorry, processing that we want, want to process here. Simple, right? Now, uh, once the processing is done, uh, we also have, uh, we, we can simply update the state of that particular device or this whole particular queue uh, using the update function in state. So this is already provided by uh, Spark. We don't have to make anything on our own. Uh, with this, now this particular uh, part comes in handy when you want to know what actually your device was in a state when there was a failure. Because when you're going to restart your platform or you restart your streaming or processing, you want to begin from where you actually left, her, left right? Because this is like, failover strategies are the major components in, in, in enterprises. Without that, they cannot even think about working. Because we cannot simply just say that, okay, what was the stock price like just 10 minutes ago? We, can, we cannot, I cannot lose that value, right? What was the patient's health uh, 10 minutes or five minutes ago or an hour ago or yesterday? I cannot lose that data. So we also keep the state here. Now this state also helps us in having or like providing the incremental updates, right? Now by incremental updates, I mean that I don't have to keep the whole data in memory. Now this helps uh, in faster processing because I just want to know what was the last value of my stock was. I don't have to keep the value of that stock from past one year, like for the whole time my uh, platform is actually processing it. So we just keep the delta with the help of this state, right? And it helps us in increment, uh, like applying the incremental uh, processing here. We don't have to uh, keep the whole data in memory because that would have been a very, uh, very uh, cumbersome process and would have taken up all the resources, right? And now, uh, we have seen how to analyze that data, how to handle those, uh, like do the processing here. So the last part remains is how to actually save it. Now saving it is quite easy with structure streaming. What we have done here is we have used the API of structure streaming and said that just save this whole data. Uh, in our case, it's just console uh, for the demo purpose. But if you want to just save that data, Instead of console, you can give the location of the S3 file here, and what it will automatically do, it will just split your data according to your key and save it in a separate folder on its own. So you don't have to worry much about the uh, division or subdivision of your data. Now, if you want to go, if you want to divide your data even further, then that's where the uh, intelligence that the platform has to apply, right? But that is totally use case dependent. So we can keep that in, like, according to the timestamp and other things as well. So that's not an not an issue. So with the help of this one uh, small snippet, we have actually resolved the issues that our clients face. Uh, of course, making this particular code and everything else uh, custom made or according to the domain or the use case, uh, that is what the challenge is that our, our platform actually resolves. Uh, so let's run this code quickly and uh, see what exactly actually it's uh, doing here. So first I'll uh, try to emit some data. <coughs> cool, so our data is actually getting uh, generated. Now, lecture, now let's start uh, analyzing that data. So here we can see that along with the device ID, we are getting some data. Now what this actual data means here, uh, it is 
keeping some sort of a, some sort of a data here, right? Uh, let's try to take a look at one of the uh, one of the block here because actually it's a, since it's a stream, it will keep on processing it. Now, what it is telling me, it's actually telling me the device ID along with that how many data points it has actually emitted uh, for, for some kind of a, a processing, we, can, we actually keep that. And the power consumption value it has uh, taken. Along with that, we have also applied our analytics over it, uh, seeing that, okay, whether it is on or off, right? Uh, <clears throat> I don't see any, any off here. Uh, maybe in next batch, yeah. So here we can see that that uh, we got a data point which actually tells us that this particular device has gone off because it might not be even emitting the data from the past 10 seconds or maybe some configurable value uh, or it has consumed the zero uh, watts of energy in the last uh, 10 seconds, right? So in this way, we can alert a very, we can generate a very simple alert uh, for all the devices that we have uh, and of course, we can apply to any domain that we have here. So this is how uh, the, the platform works in terms of uh, uh, and solves the, solu uh, solves the problem of handling like thousands of data streams uh, in using, using a single platform. Okay. I need to drag it back here. I don't know why this is not coming up. Oh. Let me try to solve it. Yep, got it. Uh, sorry for that uh, kind of display. Uh, uh, So uh, I hope you like the uh, demo, or uh, small demo for our for our use case here, and um, uh, a brief uh, introduction about what we are going to do in future is. So our our plan is to make this platform have the capability of multi-tenancy, right? So that we can support multiple uh, multiple clients. So right now we are being we are like making this particular platform and, and deploying the solutions uh, for each and every each and every uh, like uh, client. On, on K8 on the basis of their use case, like building them and uh, providing them Docker images and uh, other things. And, um, but we, but we, uh, we, are we are planning to do that uh, through, through an automated way. And the next plan is to actually uh, have an on-demand job launcher where uh, anyone from the organization can have the capability of just starting and uh, stopping those streams and start analyzing the data with the help of a simple, simple click. Um, so that's all the work that we have um, we have in progress. Uh, so that's all from uh, from my side. Thank you, Manchu. Can we give him a round of applause, please? <laughs> we have a few minutes for questions. Um, so you're putting all the uh, data for a single device type or a measurement type into a single topic on, uh, on Kafka. That's, uh, what if you have different pieces of equipment that would measure something like temperature but emit another kind of data frame? I mean, the best practice in Kafka is to use schemas to validate your topic. How would you handle that? Uh? Right. Uh, so if, if, if I got your question right, then what, what you're trying to ask is that what uh, what will happen if every device is actually emitting a different kind of data, right? And it's uh, dependent on their own. Well, own it, it could, be, could be also temperature data, but one device would be adding a time frame or an extra column or whatever uh, in there. So your JSON document would look a little bit different. 
for every device uh, uh, that you have. So, so you have a temperature gauge in one room and one in another room, and they're from a different vendor and producing temperature, but right. with a little extra data, for example. Right, right. So in, in that terms right now, uh, what, what capability we have provided to our, to our on our platform is that uh, before even starting or before even defining those, uh, starting these streams, a uh, user can actually define the schema of the data that they're actually trying to, pro that they will provide us. Now, most of the times, user actually gives us a superset of that schema that, or, okay, my, from our source, this is the data that you will try, that you will get. And uh, the kind of processing that they do, uh, we actually custom build for, for them and deploy it on our, on our system there. Okay, thanks. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, so uh, I'm just wondering if you uh, handled uh, 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 different streams having different priorities or uh, spe uh, especially when uh, you're talking about the multi-tenant uh, right. environment, uh, how do you uh, handle things like throttling? How do you handle things like um, kind of isolation? Uh, if you can go into that, it would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I understood that. Uh, so in, in terms of like giving the priorities, so for example, like of course there are clients who actually have uh, have like a priority because they actually pay more, right? Uh, so that's that's what the that's how the business is driven. So uh, for them, what we do, what we try to do is we actually have a very scalable model over K8 that is a Kubernetes, and in case they need more processing power, then we actually just scale up the, uh, scale up their pods. Uh, on on uh, on K8, uh, which is kind of an automated pr automated process handled by the DevOps team. So that is how they get the more priority because they get more uh, resources on on the uh, clusters that we have deployed. Uh, and uh, what about within uh, the same organization or the same tenant? Like when we talk about like you might have uh, hard monitors that you want to have uh, higher priority. You don't want. Uh, but at the same time, you have, I don't know, like a temperature right. monitors uh, where you have different SLAs, uh, kind of. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in, ca in, in, in terms of the priority, what we have defined here is that, is that like uh, we use uh, Akka over that, over, over this platform. Uh, so that, that is like just the gateway for our uh, platform through which all the data is actually ingested through the, uh, into, the into the platform, right? Uh, in that case, we hand the priority at the ingestion time itself. Uh, using the Akka priority queues that we uh, that we have. In that case, we just uh, define that okay for this particular uh, this particular device or this particular type of uh, data, you have a higher priority, and just provide my provide that data on on uh, priority class. Uh, 